Hello friends, in this video <coughs> I'm going to do three examples uh, on the topic of coordinate geometry. So what's the objective? We want to use coordinate geometry to solve problems. I think we want to show all the working. So this is a sketch of two points. So you've got point A which is negative 4, 5 and B which is 4, negative 5. Let me use a thinner pen. Okay. So here this is a sketch. This is not uh, drawn to scale. So the first question is find the distance between points A and B. When you want to find the distance between A and B, what we do is we use simple Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem is, suppose let us, uh, now, uh, you know this squared, now you join uh, point A and B by a right angle triangle. Okay, so this is called the run, sorry, this is the rise and this is the run. So we need to ask the question, From if, if we want to go from A to B perpendicularly, if we want to go from A to B, Okay, A to B, and how much down you have to go. Okay, imagine you go down and across. Okay, you're not going like this. So how much from A to B, if you want to reach from A to B, how much down you have to go? So I think, okay, I have to look at my X, sorry, the Y value. Okay, so the year the Y value is 5, and here the y value is negative 5. So I think the rise is the change in the y value. Okay. So rise is the change in the y value and run is the change in the x value. Okay. So I think from 5 to 0 I have to go 5. And then from 0 to negative 5 to again go 5. So the rise is negative 10 here. Okay. Yeah, the reason being negative 10 means you're going down. So the rise is negative 10. Okay. Now what's the run? Now to look at the run, you look at the... Let me change, my, change the color. Uh, so let me take violet. Now to look at run, from A to B, how much across you have to go? Because you're thinking about the distance from here to A to B, that means A to B like this, horizontally. This is a vertical distance and this is a horizontal distance. So I'm looking at my X values, okay. So I have to, I have to move, I have to go from negative 4 to 4. So I think like this, neg from negative 4 to Y axis, that's a distance of 4, and from 0 to 4, Four, that's a distance of again 4. So the run is positive 8. I hope you understand why positive 8 because you're going to the right. So how do you decide the sign? It's very simple. If you're going down, it's negative. And if you go up, it's uh, positive. For run, if you're going to the right, it's positive run. And if you're going to the left, it is uh, negative. Now you may ask, what what if if I go like this and then go, come like this? So let me draw it. Okay, so what some of you may be confused, why did I draw from year to year and then? So what happens if you go like this and then you drop down? Does it make any difference? No, it doesn't make any difference. This is the run and this is the rise. Okay, so the run would be 4 sorry, 4 plus 4, which is 8, and the run would be 5 plus 5, which is 10. Okay, so it doesn't make any difference. You join these two points in any order. From year to year, you go down, so negative 10, and then you run right. Okay, or you first run, and then you rise. So this distance is negative 10, and this distance is 8. Now we're going to use Pythagoras theorem. So if suppose this is point A, this is point B, and this is A, let us call this point C. Okay. 
Okay. So what do we know about Pythagoras theorem? We know Pythagoras theorem is hypotenuse squared, which is a b squared in this case. So this is a right angle triangle. A c b is a right angle, where a b is the hypotenuse. So we can say a b squared is equal to a c squared a c squared plus b c squared. Am I right? Yeah, b c squared or c b squared, whichever you like. Okay, so we know AC, which is negative 10, and we know BC is 8. So what will happen? So that's negative 10 squared, negative 10 squared plus 8 squared. And I hope you know negative 10 squared is negative 10 times negative 10, which is 100. Okay, and 8 times 8 is 64. So what do we get? So let me scroll down. So this is 164. Now this is AB squared. Now in the next step, I want to get rid of this squared. Now to get rid of the square, you have to do the opposite of square. And the opposite of square is, yes, if you're thinking square root, that's right. So this is square, if you take the square root of this side, this is square root of 164. So I have to take the square root of this side. So when you square root one square, the square will get, get cancelled because square and square root are opposite of each other. So we say AB, so AB is equal to square root of 164. Now, I don't know the square root of 164. I need a calculator to figure that out. So I know uh, it, it should be around 13 because I know 169, square root of 169 is 13, and square root of 144 is 12. So it will be between, it's almost 13. So let me confirm. So this is my calculator. Menu run. Okay. So I go square root of 164. There we go, it's 12.8, so I'll, in one BP, uh, this is 12.8, so this is 12.8 unit. Okay, I'm not interested in the units, whatever unit is, so it's 12.8 in one BP. So that's very simple. Okay, now, the next question is to find the coordinate E the midpoint of AB. We want to find what is the midpoint of this line segment AB. So midpoints come somewhere here. I'm making a guess. It is not drawn to scale. So this is my E. So we want to find the coordinate of E. Okay, my writing is not good. So to find the midpoint or the coordinates of the midpoint, what we do is it is halfway between these two points, okay? Midpoint is halfway between the points. So the coordinate would be the halfway between the x coordinates and halfway between the y coordinates, okay? So my drawing is not right. I'll delete this because I can see my mistake now. So the midpoint would come somewhere here. Yeah, I don't know. So what you do is to find the midpoint of any line segment, you add the x coordinates and divide it by 2. That means you want to find halfway between them. So, yeah, so E, that is the midpoint, should come halfway between the x coordinates. So I can go, I can say, I know one x coordinate is negative 4 and the other is 4. So I can, I'll go negative 4 plus 4 over 2. That's my x coordinate. And for y coordinate, the same thing. You add the y coordinates and divide it by 2 because you want to find halfway between the y coordinates. So the same principle uh, phi plus negative phi divided by 2. Okay? 
So that gives me, this is very simple, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, over 2 is 0. And uh, this is also 0, over 2, which is 0. Now the, the drawing is not to scale, this is the midpoint, okay? This is the midpoint. It doesn't look like midpoint, but believe me, it is. Okay, and the last question is to find the equation of this line. Okay, now the equation of a line you should be knowing is y is equal to mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So we already have worked out the gradient. So gradient you should be knowing again is rise over run. Okay, so what's my rise? Now if you think about this line, this is from left to right. When are we looking at a gradient? When you want to find a gradient, you're always looking from left to right. Left to right, if you look from left to right, left to right, the graph, the line is uh, sloping down, so it has a negative gradient. So the rise is negative 10 over 8. Okay, so let me use my calculator. Uh, negative 10 uh, negative 10 divided by 8 equal negative 1.25 so the gradient is negative 1.25 okay and uh, so we can say y is equal to mx plus c so this is my y so I can say this line should be minus 1.25. I don't have space, so I'll write, uh, believe, uh, I'll write y is equal to, uh, I'll write it again, minus 1.25x plus c. Okay. Now, what do we know? We know that minus, sorry, 4 negative 5 is a point 4 negative 5 is a point on this line so that's what I've written now 4 negative 5 lies on the line which line this line so this point satisfies this equation so what does that mean this means this is my x value and this is my y value so I can substitute this into this equation which means I can put y as negative 5 and x as Oh, and that's what I've done. So y is negative 5 plus uh, negative 5 is equal to negative 1.25 times 4 plus c. So this is negative 5, and you can use your calculator. So I'm simplifying this. So this is negative 5, y, and minus 1.25 times 4 would be negative 5 plus c. Okay? So both the sides have negative 5 so that they get cancelled so c is equal to 0 so what's the equation of the line so y is equal to negative 1.25 1.25x plus 0 you may not write 0 if you don't want to but i'll write 0 to show that the y-intercept is 0. i'll show you how can you do this on the graphic calculator the graphic calculator does tell you the that's a bit cunning uh, if you want your if uh, when they are telling you to show the working they expect you to they expect you to show the working but you can always check your answer and then do the working that's what I like about graphic calculator so uh, I will show you that in the next video thank you